your lunch break with us. I think there's some really interesting information to chat through here. Uh, we're going to talk about some ways that you can kind of push through this economy. Um, so we are starting with how to advertise in economic uncertainty. Um, Mel's going to be driving today. So Mel, if you don't mind clicking to the next slide here. Here's kind of the topics we're going to cover. We're just going to give you a really brief overview on Tegent Labs and who we are. Uh, but we want to spend the majority of our conversation today talking about the landscape, uh, some recommendations, and how you can really tackle this environment to your advantage. So uh, again, we'll be real brief here on who we are. Um, Tegent Labs really is a... One more there, Mel. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so some introductions would probably also be helpful before I get into those meat and potatoes. So I'm Lauren Morell. I'm the SVP here at Tekken Labs. I spent the majority of my time in digital marketing. I spent some time on the publisher side, the agency side. Uh, I'm really excited to get to dig into some of these trends with you today. Uh, Mel, if you want to do your intro. Yeah, absolutely. I am Melanie Lightery. I am our Director of Business Development. I work really closely alongside Lauren, um, also come from a pretty extensive um, broadcast background and again, excited to dig into what we have prepared for you today. Cool. Thanks, Mel. Okay, now for real this time, just a very high level overview of Tegent Labs. Uh, we are a full service independent advertising agency specialty, specializing in digital media, offline strategy and planning, as well as design. Uh, we really strive to bring our clients as much actionable data and insights as possible. And we really go to market as a conversion oriented agency. So if there's a bottom funnel action that we really need to drive, whether that be sales or heads and beds, um, enrollments, whatever that could look like, we really work well within those verticals. We're also firm believers in a full funnel approach, knowing that uh, the more we're able to maximize your awareness and engagement, that that can ultimately translate into conversion. Um, and I'll th I think we'll see some of these themes really sprinkled throughout the presentation today. Um, but before we get there, I just want to touch on some of the tools and tech that we leverage here in-house and really what that allows us to provide for our clients. Uh, so I won't spend any time addressing each of these individually. Again, you're not here to hear about us. You're here to hear about the landscape. Um, but really, our goal is to get a sense of what your competitive environment looks like, as well as your target audience um, and how they consume their media to give us a really holistic understanding of how we can be strategic in the market. I think we leverage a number of these tools again, to understand outside factors as well as internal factors to allow you to maximize your dollars. Some of these tools do give us insight into what's happening in the market landscape, uh, where there's saturation of budgets or how your competitors are even buying their media. And we sort of intake all of this information to really identify a white space or a competitive advantage. We're firm believers in outsmarting and not outspending. And then the last piece to mention here is strategy is great and data is really helpful, but it doesn't mean a whole lot if you can't execute on that information. Uh, so our team is very um, adept at bringing those insights to life and really bringing that message to the market and maximizing performance. And then we have the tools and tech to let you see what's happening with those campaigns at any given time. Uh, so really bringing all of those different elements together in strategy, execution, and measurement to really let you understand what's happening from a marketing perspective. Now, I mentioned external factors in some of those tools, and I think that's really what we're going to dive into here today. Certainly a very interesting economic climate, and I think a lot of things to unpack here. So with that, um, Mel, do you want to tell us about the current state? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's no secret um, in regards to our current state, uh, state of the climate as a whole. Um, obviously, we have seen quite a bit in the news in regards to the recession and the debate on whether we are we in a recession, are we not in a recession, is a recession coming? Um, and I think it's 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 hard to understand which you know direction to go, especially as you look at your business and your advertising needs. Should you um, you know put your foot on the gas and increase your spending? Should you pull back, understanding that a recession may be looming or may be here? Um, and I think it's you know despite this looming recession or recession that we are in, I think it's important to understand the economy is still adding millions of jobs as we look at the course of the year as a whole. Um, and I think we've started to see inflation chill out just slightly. Um, obviously, our gas prices are starting to come down. Granted, they are still uh, extraordinarily high, but we're starting to see a little bit of a level off, if you will. Um, and I think, you know, all signs are pointing to 
you know, that we are um, steady in the economy for now. Um, a recession could be coming, but let's also not forget that we are coming out of a pandemic or, you know, again, those headlines, are we still in a pandemic? Um, there's a lot of dis data out there and I think it's, um, you know, not to be disputed, but I definitely think, you know, the implications about what to do and about what is happening right now um, is really kind of, you know, what you probably are thinking as a business owner. And these are just two topics that are concerning not only business owners, but consumers right now when we look to um, what's happening. And I also would say, like, let's not forget what's happening with the stock market. We have supply chain issues. The great resignation is happening. Um, and obviously, there's a lot on our plates as we look at, you know, consumers in the market as a whole, as well as what businesses should be should be doing, especially when it comes to their um, advertising, especially as we move into the holiday season. Um, so, all that to be said, um, I think we can all agree that there is really one thing that we all agree with is that there is this perpetual uncertainty of what is going to be happening with um, the market as a whole. And I think, um, you know, as we look at kind of the consumer story as a whole and we look at financial data as a whole, um, Forbes is predicting that consumers are going to continue spending in 2022 despite inflation running higher than wage gains. Um, that being said, you know, hourly earnings over the past 12 months have increased six and a half percent. Now, that being said, consumer price index has also increased, um, which are indicating some budget challenges. However, let's not forget that consumers were able to save more than usual during those pandemic years, understanding that travel was put on hold. We had stimulus money coming in um, and we know the feds are continuing to increase those interest rates, which are also going to limit some of that big ticket spending that is usually um, financed during these months, especially. Well, I think that's such a promising thing to note. I think knowing that there is a lot of uncertainty happening in the market, that prediction that consumer spending will continue, I think is really promising. Um, wow, that almost became two words there. Uh, promising <laughs> indicator for brands. So I definitely think there's really a way to, to make this market work for you. And we're excited to get into that. But I just wanted to mention, I think that's a really compelling thing to hear. No, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, Forbes is um, our optimist, if you will, um, in the environment here, pretty much saying that, you know, the spending outlook for 2022 and beyond is secure because of high employment rates, um, increase in wages, and of course, that past stimulus money, um, which has also helped consumers quite a bit in making some of their purchases as well. Um, one thing that we were able to take a look into is an Affirm uh, customer database, and this report um, did report that two-thirds of U.S. consumers are concerned that inflation is going to prevent them from purchasing the things that they want. So again, as we look at some of that conflicting message, we have Forbes saying that everything is fine and spending is going to continue to increase. increase. We have Affirm um, telling us that you know two-thirds of U.S. consumers are concerned that inflation is going to prevent them from purchasing the things that they want. And I think really when it comes down to this conflicting messaging, we really should um, take a moment, especially as businesses, to understand who our consumers are and what their spending tendencies are. So it really comes down to making sure that you as a business are messaging to the right audience or targeting new audiences that may be more inclined to spend. Um, and when we think about what audiences are the right audiences and who be who might be more inclined to spend, um, we see that 53% of millennials and Gen Z are, spend, are planning to spend less versus 81% of Gen X and boomers are planning to spend the same or more during inflation. So it really comes down to having a deep understanding of your audience and on also understanding where there may be opportunity to target new audiences that may be more inclined to spend. And let's not also forget about some of the benefits of advertising through tough times. You know, I um, all the time talk about Home Depot and the state farms and the liberties of the world. They are constantly spending whether the industry is up, whether the economy is down, whether it's the holiday season, whether it's not. And they have the market share when it comes to um, top of mind brand awareness. And they really benefited through that consistency of advertising through good times and tough times. And so I wanna spend a couple minutes here just calling out some of the benefits of advertising through um, tough economic times. First and foremost, we know that a lot of um, businesses um, will 
cut back on their ad spend during tough times. Um, and so really when we look at that noise level, if you will, that can really drop drastically and allow for a competitive advantage. Um, it also allows for advertisers to reposition a brand or take the time to introduce a new product, understanding that the noise level is low what better time to showcase a new product um, or rebrand, if you will, in a time where there isn't as much saturation of messaging happening within the market as a whole. Um, brands can also project to um, consumers the image of consistency and stability. Again, as I lean into those state farms and liberties and Home Depots of the world, they have won that monster share because they are consistent. And we know, um, unfortunately, we are going to hear that amazing Liberty jingle that we hear on every single commercial, every single time. But really the benefit of that is the consistency. And again, that frequency and consistency is really what it comes down to, especially as we look towards um, capturing a new market share during times that are you know, potentially economically tough on individuals. It also allows for a competitive opportunity for businesses that are able to capitalize on the market conditions while we know that other brands and competitors may be pulling back on their spending. So think of, you know, especially as we move into the holiday season, which is traditionally a little bit more saturated with holiday messaging, because we may be in an impending recession, brands may be pulling back on their spend. And that allows for a really great competitive opportunity for you to be able to come into the marketplace and capture more of a share than you have in the past. Um, and then a final call out here for an, uh, one final benefit of advertising through some of those tough times is that increase in market share. Um, and obviously with an increase in market share comes increased audience reach and an opportunity for increase in your profits overall. So I know I've covered a lot on the landscape and gosh, has the news done such a good job of driving home a lot of those recession and COVID points. So we are going to move past those and I'm going to pass it off to Lauren to dig into some industry insights that could be helpful for your business. Yeah, thanks, Mel. I think there's so many interesting, we sound like a news broadcast, by the way, I just realized. I know. <laughs> <laughs> here I we that, are. Here we are. I mean, there's so many interesting takeaways here really to understand um, kind of what's happening overall from an economic standpoint. But I think there's some really great takeaways for brands um, to really understand where consumers are and how they're investing. So um, interestingly, I think in light of all of the information that you just shared with us, Mel, we are seeing some of these verticals really recognize and realize increases in spend. And I think consumers are still investing in things like travel and experiences. I think to your earlier point, really, there's a lot of pent up COVID demand coming out of that. Um, and really looking to how they can sort of expand that experience reach. Interestingly, I think, especially as we head into Q4, seeing things like electronics and retail showing high levels of investment, I think that's a really promising thing to see. I also think it's really interesting just looking at this overall list that there are there are eight verticals showing an increase in overall investment and some of them by large margins. A lot of these too, if we think about it, are not small ticket items, certainly experiences and travel for sure. Um, but electronics as well. I know it's not necessarily included on this slide, but I saw a report the other day that where consumers are potentially pulling back is in things like going out to eat. So it seems like they're making you know nuanced impacts on their day to day, but still looking towards some investments around things like experiences and travel. So I think really promising information to see overall. Something that I want to call out with professional services too is certainly we're based here in Denver. It's been a really hot real estate market for a, lot, a number of years, uh, but we're seeing some shifts as it relates to the overall real estate market. And so I think people are looking inward on their homes into how they can improve their current spaces. So not surprising that we're seeing some of those professional services come into play as well. Uh, overall, I think really kind of laddering up to what you'd previously mentioned, Mel, just some promising indicators as we're seeing just overall consumer spending come into the market. So now let's kind of think about this from a brand side of things. And really, what are we noticing as it relates to trending spread from the brand side? I think this is a really interesting report kind of showing from a from a biggest and second biggest breakdown where brands are investing their dollars as they're evaluating this overarching landscape. And I think some of what's really interesting here is we think see things like display um, or programmatic, some of this audience extension work alongside things like video and OTT. And we'll talk about why I think that's relevant here in just a second. But I think what this really indicates is that brands are sort of 
diversifying their media mixes to maintain an awareness and engagement strategy alongside their conversion-based strategies. We definitely don't want to ignore the bottom of the funnel. We know that really is the meat and potatoes in a lot of ways for brands, especially as we think about something like paid search or social, social media in a lot of ways. But really interesting to see that brands are investing in the long-term health of their overarching brand affinity and awareness. Anytime I see display or programmatic included in a mix, I'm really excited to know that that brand is investing in sort of the, the long-term acquisition of new customers, of their KPI generation. Um, so really, really promising and again, very interesting to see how brands are investing from a digital standpoint. Now, I think looking at how consumers are, are leveraging their devices, I think this is always a really interesting topic to touch on. Um, Certainly video consumption on varied devices or uh, your mobile phone versus a smart TV has been an ongoing conversation. And I think, again, how consumers are consuming their media is really important to understand as well. I think really one of the big takeaways here today is being as efficient and effective with aligning your message um, and aligning your strategy with where consumers are at and really meeting them um, both from a tactical perspective, but also from a device standpoint where they're at to help max maximize your dollars. Um, so interesting to see here, I think some of the things, at least for me, that weren't surprising is that desktop viewing time is down. I think we're really seeing that diversify amongst mobile phones and even tablets. I'll speak for myself. I'm definitely a, a Bravo watcher on my phone specifically, <laughs> less on a set top in particular. And I also think it's really interesting to see the rise of smart TVs. So smart TVs really being uh, the platform where there's those pre-installed apps. It's all sort of running through your set top and less through a, connect a connected device like a Roku, for example. So I think as you think about a diversified cross-channel approach, really prioritizing where we see those consumers exist. I think the, the asterisk that I will put next to this is understanding how your consumers engage with your content and convert with your products is also important to know. I think we on the Tech It Lab side, we do a lot of work in higher education and we see a high amount of engagement from potential students on mobile devices, but we also still see a high prominence of conversion happening on a desktop device because it's simply easier to fill out an extended form in that way. So I think also putting yourself in the mindset of your consumer to understand how they go through your entire customer journey is important and really making sure that you're addressing each device sort of without or throughout that engagement. Okay, the, oh, Mel, did we miss I one? I skipped one, I Are did, we? sorry about that. Oh, no, all good. I think the last piece that we wanna to touch on here, I think is really speaking to that, uh, those bar charts that we saw a couple of slides ago is that consumers really are taking action on those awareness mediums. 25% of users who see a display ad will search for that product or service within 24 hours. That's a huge metric. And I think it's also showing a very close relationship between these channels and why it is so valuable to have an omni-channel approach. We know that these tactics work together. We know that a holistic approach leveraging awareness and engagement mechanisms will ultimately complement your bottom funnel conversion strategy. Again, I think this is really compelling. I think there's there's uh, sometimes questions around the value of awareness media. And I think this really does speak to the fact that those are very closely linked. So when we talk about how we can kind of continue to help brands permeate this really, I'll say interesting economic climate, um, I think this is absolutely something that's critical to keep in mind. All right, Mel, I'll let you get to this slide now. I didn't mean to stop you on that skipped one. <laughs> no, my computer decided we wanted to skip ahead anyways. All good there. Um, I think, you know, as we kind of talked through um, some insights in regards to what's happening in the economy and some things that you can take into con some consideration as well as you look towards um, what your current strategy looks like, um, we have some recommendations that I think moving into Q4 and especially as we move into Q3 are very beneficial as you look towards your campaigns and where potential improvements can be made, understanding that our economy um, is shifting in regards to spending behaviors and habits of consumers. And first and foremost, um, what we want to ask is, you know, to take this time and really think about your strategies that you have in place and ask yourself some of these questions. You know, when is the last time you had someone audit your Google Analytics? Um, have you transitioned your Google Analytics or your Universal Analytics, if you will, 
over to GA4, understanding that universal analytics is going away in 2023. Um, when is the last time you had someone audit your Google ads channels and your social channels and you've taken a really deep dive into um, what is working well and perhaps where some um, improvements can be made in regards to your keyword and audience strategies? Also, as we look at the competitive space, understanding that some of your competitors may be pulling back on their spend in this economic uncertainty, but some of your competitors may be increasing their spend. And so one of the things we, we want you to ask yourself is, do you know the following things about your biggest competitors? Do you know what some of their geographic strategies are? Um, do you understand what messaging they're putting out into the market? Um, do you know how much they're spending even or what they're spending their money on? On and what media mix that they have incorporated into their marketing strategy. All of these things are things that can help you align not only most competitively within the marketplace as we move into Q4 and beyond, but it's also helpful to understand where opportunity may exist for you. And then we move to how well do you know your audience? Is it the same as it was last year? Um, so much has changed in the past couple of years with the pandemic, which I know we're all so tired of hearing about the pandemic, but it really has had a ripple effect on businesses and the audiences that are engaging with businesses. And so, you know, I we ask you to take this time and, and kind of think about who your target audience is now. And is it the same as they were last year? Um, if it's not, what has changed? Um, do you know some of the media consumption habits of your audience? Do you um, have a really honed in understanding of the age range of your audience? Perhaps what income levels are um, your audience are most highly to convert? Um, do we understand the deep demographic information of your audience um, as the world continues to evolve and change? You know, all of these items are things that can really help with a robust advertising campaign that can help you reach your exact audience that you're wanting to get in front of, but not only that, but optimize the dollars that you are putting into the marketplace so you're not wasting um, any of your you know, precious funds right now advertising to perhaps an audience that may not be converters of yours. And then finally, the question is, you know, do you understand your highest value clients and where they are coming from geographically? Um, do you know where they reside? Do you know where audiences that are just like your existing customer base reside? All of these pieces are things that, again, can really help you move competitively into the space and hone in on your ad strategy so that the precious dollars that you're putting out into the market are going to the exact audiences that are most likely to convert for you. And the mute button every single time. Um, so I think really, the, Mel, I think to sum everything up, really, this is a unique time to address and answer your most important questions, whether that's from a marketing standpoint or larger business questions. It really is a time to dig in and maximize the data you have and even potentially leverage some outside sources to augment that same information. I think it's really a time to kind of push through. There's a lot of advantages to continuing to be in the market, but I think it's also a time to be more thoughtful, more strategic, and really dive into these individual pieces. There's definitely ways that partners can help. This is definitely somewhere that tech and labs can support. But I think the biggest thing is truly understanding where the business has been, where it's going, who you're speaking to, what does the landscape look like, and taking advantage of every little detail there. I think small improvements make a big impact. And this is a really great time uh, to address and answer some of those important questions. So speaking of important questions, um, I didn't, I'm sorry to everybody for that. Any, any <laughs> questions from the group on the presentation today? Anything that Mel and I can help answer? Lauren, it looks like we had a couple questions come through. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, one of the first questions that we had was, how should a business know when it's time to make a change in their marketing strategy? Um, are there any key indicators that would dictate that adjustments are needed? Great question. That is a great question. And Mel, I'm really curious your thoughts on this, but I would say the, the specific indicator itself is probably unique to every business. I think what every company is measuring, what, what are those macro KPIs that you need to fulfill? 
those North star metrics, for example, those are really important. I would say when you think about key indicators on when it's time to make an adjustment, I think my advice there would be to stay nimble and let the data tell you where you need to go. Um, I think definitely there's a balancing act between proving out a strategy and testing and learning, but there's also something to be said for if something's not working, pivot. Um, I think that's one huge advantage to digital. And I think, again, as we think about marketing in this landscape, that'll continue to be really critical for brands is staying nimble, um, looking at and addressing and reacting to the data um, and being nimble and moving quickly when you know it's time. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And in regards to this question, um, especially the the nimble piece of what you just called out, Lauren, you know, we have met with so many clients that have talked about how after um, some privacy changes that, that have come down the line from Facebook and Apple have pretty significantly impacted a business's ability to scale and reach the same audience that they were reaching prior to some of these privacy updates. Um, however, they also said, I know my media mix, I know how I need to reach my audience. And I think it's really important, like you said, Lauren, to be nimble in your strategy and and be willing to test um, certain um, changes to your strategy, but also be hyper focused and honed in on the data that you're receiving as a result of those campaigns and be able to pivot where necessary. Totally agreed. Okay, we had another question here. Um, when is a good time to start advertising for the holiday season? I love this question. <laughs> go for it, Mel. I think you should give that a, give that one a go. <laughs> I love it. We're going to ask it and I'm going to answer it too. Um, oh. So in regards to when is a good time to start advertising for the holiday season, um, I think we've all been in the grocery stores and have seen that Christmas items are on the shelves and they are placed directly next to the Halloween items, which I think is a total conflicting message. And I think Christmas keeps creeping into um, our world earlier and earlier every year. And so um, in response to that, I definitely say the earlier, the better. Um, that being said, I certainly would not recommend starting to advertise for the holiday season in September, um, primarily because it's not even fall yet for a lot of us in our minds. And I think um, a lot of people are turned off by how quickly Christmas is being put in front of us and how far in advance Christmas is being put in front of us. Now, that being said, the holiday season is um, a very competitive time. And I definitely think there's opportunity in the months leading up to, you know, November and December that definitely exists. So I would say October is a great time to start. Um, but Lauren, interested in your thoughts on that as well. So I will provide my personal opinion and I will provide my, <laughs> my personal opinion is that the holidays should not start until after Thanksgiving, but that's my own individual <laughs> hot take. Um, I think something to keep in mind with the holiday season and something we saw, I think is a symptom or an outcome I should say of COVID is that that marketing started significantly earlier and lasted significantly longer than we've seen in the past. So my thoughts on this are like really evaluate Q4 and what Q4 means to your business and your marketing budget. I think it's a balancing act. I think Q4 and holiday can get expensive. It's a definitely a, a more competitive environment, but I think for a lot of brands, that is the time to maximize your value to consumers and consumers are looking for your products. And it really makes sense to play in that space. I think the biggest thing for Q4 is to have a strategy and to know how you're going to approach it and know how you want to message around that time. It's a key time of year. Um, so when is a good time to start? I think my thoughts to that are when it makes sense for your larger marketing strategy. And I think, um, again, my personal opinion is, is, is well around or before other brands being in market. So if you've got a black Friday, cyber Monday offer, for example, I wouldn't just launch that the day before. I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, the more you can get in front of uh, the holiday season, as much as we all hate how early the holidays are creeping up on us these years, um, I definitely think better. And especially, you know, it allows you a little bit more frequency and reach ahead of those uh, major partners coming into the space as well. It's a great question for sure. All right, we have another question here. Um, if my business hasn't made the transition from universal analytics, when do you think we should move over to GA4 and will my data be lost? Okay, I love that question. It's a great question. Um, personally, I'm so excited for GA4. I think it's an upgrade that's been well, a long time needed for Google Analytics. And I think the out-of-the-box features that are gonna be afforded to brands um, is really robust. 
I think we know, I don't think we know, we know that uh, universal analytics will be deprecated in July of next year. So really our recommendation would be to make move as soon as you possibly can to maintain year over year data. I think especially for brands that experience a high amount of seasonality and maintaining that year over year view is so important. So I think definitely the sooner you can make the move the better. The nice thing is that the data won't be lost for another year after that. So you'll be able to reference your old universal analytics account in July, but Google will ultimately make the move where universal analytics will completely go away. I believe that that data is a year following. So definitely now is the time just to make sure you have that year over year view of what's happening with the business. I couldn't agree more. And I think the sooner that you make that transition over to GA4, the more um, historical data that you'll have when Google does decide to remove all of the universal analytics data as well. So the sooner, the better, for sure. All good questions. Any others? I think I'm going to do a shameless plug here and ask one more question. Um, if our business owners don't have answers to some of these questions, what should they do? <laughs> <laughs> I think you started that question with the, with the right, with the right lead in there. I mean, I think really it is, it is do your research, consult your partners again with the shameless plug tech and labs can definitely help you answer these questions. Um, so I think lean on your resources, do your research and, and tap into partners and let them support where they can. Again, I'll, I'll jump on the shameless plug, Tegna Labs being one of those partners that can assist. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, thanks everyone so much for joining today. We really appreciate you taking your lunch hour to spend with us. Um, if there's any questions, we'll definitely send this presentation out after today, but please don't hesitate to reach out. Tegna Labs is here to help for whatever you need. Thanks, thanks everyone. everyone so much for the time. Have a great rest of your week.